In today's society, it's become so clear that many of us in this generation are seeking answers and understanding. We're not content with the misinformation that we've been taught. In the words of Maya Angelou, the more you know your history, the more liberated you are. And to have a concept of who we are, we must understand what our ancestors knew and what roles it played in their lives. In this four part series, I want to talk about some of the ever traditional concepts that have now been deemed indigenous, outdated, or even misconceived by modern society. These traditional concepts explain the philosophy of our existence and even the importance of nature and how all things in this universe are connected. Ever philosophy recognizes that in addition to the creator of the universe, there are other beings that hold fundamental values to our lives. And from an indigenous perspective, we can put them into four groups of beings, all of which have spiritual characteristics and powers. These are the supreme being, the supernatural being, which deals with spirits, nature gods, deities and ancestral spirits. The animate being, which consists of us as human beings, the animals and also plants. And finally, the inanimate being, which focuses on the earth, sun and moon, the mountains, seas and rivers. The name Mao by ontological definition means the supreme being. But when you break down the word, etymologically, it's made up of two words or phrases. Ma, which means that, and Wu, which means to surpass, excel, or to be more than. So the literal translation of Mao is that whom surpasses, or that whom supersedes everything else. The ancient Evers always believed that Maui was a supreme being, the creator of the universe and all things in it. He is known to have characteristic attributes such as being all-powerful, all-knowing, universal and being a force only for good. As the creator of the universe, Maui is the greatest power, an unfailing source of refuge and help to all people when everything fails and a personal and moral being who judges human beings. Evers recognize him as the source of life and everything in the universe. In recent ages, when we think of the Creator or even speak about the presence of God, we often refer to Mao as the father or to some the mother of the universe. However, Mao transcends the human concept of gender. This basically means that they are neither man or woman, but rather has masculine and feminine principles. The Trinity explains the different principles of Mao and how they structure our lives. Each principle focuses on either the feminine, masculine, or spiritual aspects of the Creator. The first of the Trinity is Mao Sodza, the female principle and the source of life, characterized with harmony and peace, care and joy, creativity, kind-hearted and provident. The second is Mao Sobla, the male principle, characterized with power and labor, strength and toughness, pain and suffering, destruction, and is also known as the stern distributor of justice. Now the third and final is Mao Se or Mao Ese. This principle focuses on the unity of life, the great spirit of the universe, the impersonal law, 
and is also the determiner of destinies of human beings. It's also important to know that there are many other names that the Trinity of Mao is referred to and the difference and variation in the terminology can be a result of dialect differences, also geographical and subcultural differences between the many different ever groups that we have. But with that being said, the underlying concepts, belief, philosophy and spiritual connotations of Mao as God and the Trinity of the Supreme Being are always the same, regardless of the subcultural differences. As I said before, it's so important to know this information because there is a perception that the concept of Mao as the Supreme God was influenced or even copied from European missionaries when that isn't the case at all. In fact, from the beginning of time, the Evers have always given Mao the highest spiritual status. In the ancient African world, way before the Islamic and Christian missionaries, crusaders and traders came about, which was from the 15th to the 19th centuries, there was a clear evidence of a religious world where the concept of God as one supreme being was always there. Even though there were various names given to this supreme being, depending on the specific African culture, he was always revered as the creator of the universe. In fact, some of the early European travelers did record this general African concept and their loyalty to the Supreme God. A European traveler called William Bosman, who traveled to West Africa in the 17th century, states in his book, the African believed in the Supreme God that they had an idea of the true God and ascribed to him the attributes of almighty and omnipresent. They believe he created the universe and therefore vastly prefer him before their idol gods, but do not pray to him or offer sacrifices to him. Now the Germans were some of the earliest Europeans to have contact with the Evers. They actually established the Christian church denominations like Bremen and Basel missions, some of which are today the Evangelical Presbyterian Church and various Catholic missions all around Everland. This is quite important to know because the Germans actually wrote most of the early documentations of Ever history. In fact, the German missionary reports actually testify to the fact that Mao was believed to be the supreme god among the ever way before the European incursion into West Africa. A. B. Ellis wrote that the German missionaries who are the only class of Europeans who ever seem to try to discover what the religious beliefs of the natives really are, are of the opinion that Mao is held to be the lord of the terrestrial gods who are subordinated to his control and some even go as far as to say that he created them. The Asian Evers believe that Mao being so remote from us, it's not because we consider him unconcerned with us as human beings, but rather because we think of him in his original ancestral role as the supreme provider, you know, the creator of the universe and it doesn't feel right to bother him with minor technicalities of the universe, such as financial issues or problems that have little impact in the spiritual world. And this is where the importance of deities, divinities and ancestral spirits come into place. It is believed that Mao appoints these deities and ancestral spirits as deputies and assistants who become overseers and guardians of the many natural wonders of the world. These divinities are the recipients of sacrifice, rituals and messages for the Supreme Being from us as humans. And this leads us to our next episode where we will discuss more in depth about these deities, divinities and ancestral spirits, their connection between us as human beings and of course the Supreme Being. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something new. 
feel free to comment and share your thoughts and i'll see you guys in the next episode